Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Wallace Beery, Marjorie Main, Noah Beery, and Carol Ann Beery in Barnacle Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. There comes a knocking on our door tonight, a seafaring character whose name is famed in song and story, Barnacle Bill. While he may not be identical with the gentleman who vowed to sail the sea until I croak, fight and swear and chew and smoke, he certainly has many of the lusty and contagious manners of his namesake. And no one could better portray the role of such a character than Wallace Beery. Wally appears, co-starred with Marjorie Maine, his brother Noah, and his daughter, Carol Ann, in Metro-Golden-Mayer's boisterous comedy, Barnacle Bill, a saga spiced with sentiment and humor and sparked by the excitement so inherent in the lives of those who seek their fortune by the sea, matching brain and muscle with the elements. In keeping with that spirit of resourcefulness afloat, Many of you probably saw in a recent issue of Life magazine the photograph of a young American wife sailing to join her husband overseas. Plainly visible in her open suitcase are the gifts she's taking to her husband's family. One is canned goods, and the other is two packages of Lux Flakes. And I'm sure that when that young bride meets her in-laws for the first time, that friendly gift of Lux Flakes will do much to break the ice, as well as to recommend her as a housewife of distinction. We're off to the pungent coast of California and the first act of Barnacle Bill, starring Wallace Beery in the title role and Marjorie Maine as Marge Cavendish, with Noah Beery as Adam Kelly and Carol Ann Beery as Virginia. Like a broken heart meets gladness, like the flowers need the dew, like a baby needs its mother, that's how I need you, that's how I need you. For nearly six months, and Bill Johansson sat in Margie Cavendish's parlor and rendered that haunting duet with her. Rendered meaning to tear apart. But now on the bow of his dilapidated fishing boat, Bill's returning to port. Pico, his partner, labors manfully at the oars of a rowboat, slowly towing the fishing boat into dock. Hey, Bill, why don't you help me with the oaring? Here, help you? Did you ever hear of a captain deserting his ship? I'm just sitting here till my vessel sinks from under me. That there's marital tradition, Pico. He may be, but she will tow better if you pump some of those water out. Oh, she'll float all right until we get her into the dock. Hey, Pico, you see that there Gloucester schooner over there? That there's the three sisters. No. Go and eat that a pretty ship. Bill, we're going to sink any minute. Oh, stop your worrying. There's the boatyard dead ahead. You sure they fix your boat in here? Will you stop your yammering? My sweetie lives in there, she and her pa. Why, him and me's just like father and son. They'll be tickled to death to see me. They'll... Is that you, Bill? You have long? Hello, Margie. Hello, Pop. You big yoga. You get any closer and I'll grab a half moon down your face. Oh, that's your father, Bill. I'm home, Marge. You keep that boat out of our dock. Stand clear, you old abalone. I'm throwing a line. Tie this up, honey. Throw it in, Bill. Don't you do it, daughter. Don't you do it. If you don't, we'll sink right here in your front yard. Can't let her sink, Pop. You block her way. Hey, Bill. Yes, ma'am. Pull this old top of the cradle. Sure is surprising to see you, Bill. Come oh. on aboard. Gee, hello, Marge. Gosh. Just don't you try to 
try any more of your slick ways with my little girl, you good-for-nothing deadbeat. Don't you call me a deadbeat. I'll sue you for liability. Now stop talking mean to my pap or I'll pop your hair with this here axe. Marge, you ain't changed one teeny bit, have you? You got that hundred dollars you owe us? Well, to tell you the truth, Miss Sir Marge, you're just as pretty as you ever was. Oh, this year's Pico, him and me's partners. Howdy. Hello, Pico. You remember the little girl I'm always talking about being so handsome and talented? No, I don't remember. Hey, hey. So why did you step on my foot? You remember Pico, my pinup girl. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, this is it, Pico, on the hoof. What about my hundred dollars? Pop, I ain't got it on me at the moment. Just an oversight. I'm going for a lawyer right now. I'll attach your boat. Oh, you ain't going nowhere, Pap. Bill ain't got a boat, he can't face. And if he can't face, he can't pay his bills. It's all there is to it. And get on in the store, daughter. Customer just came in. See you in a minute, Marge. Pico, ain't that some fine figure of a woman, huh? I don't know, Bill. I think maybe you just been looking on the mackerels too long. Hey, Bill, you really think her father gonna get a lawyer? Oh, who cares? I don't really own the boat anyway. You don't own your boat? Not legal like I don't. That boat belongs to my daughter. When I bought it, I had it put in Virginie's name. Jeannie? How did I know? I ain't seen her since I left Gloucester. That's a long time ago. How do I know? I don't know. Well, what are we going to do now? You go and help that fella get that boat up on the cradle. I'm going in and smooth some with Marge. Are you here to talk, Bill Johansson, or to eat us out of cracker? Dog, dog garland, Marge. You sure have got a fine story here. Everything a seafaring man would want for well, all I know, it's hard work. That's something you wouldn't know anything about. You know, Marge, I've seen a lot of women in my life, but I never seen any like you. When they're talented, why, they ain't pretty. And when they're pretty, why, why, they ain't sophisticated. Gosh, you got all three combined. You're the flatternest man I ever did see. But somehow it always costs me money. No, no, what did you have to go say that for? I was... I was just going to speak about that little bill that I owe, but you got me all embarrassed, and I don't want to. Oh, well, I didn't mean to. Go on, Bill. Well, I came here kind of a sudden, Marge. I just ain't had time to have my bank accounts transferred. You got your pants on? Margie, sure I got my britches on. Then you're standing in the middle of your bank account right now. You know doggone well I'll pay you the first load of fish I get. Pay off a hundred dollars with one load of fish? There's some optimist. That's it. Go on. Call me names. When I go after fish, I get them. Yeah. The prices ain't what they used to be. Ow! Oh, keep your big mitts off of my crackers. Have I been eating your crackers? Of course you have. You see, well, you, you got me so doggone stirred up, I don't even know what I'm doing. Margie, doggone it. You're, you're prettier than a sea bass. Now, stow that soft talk. I'm talking about the price of fish, not the looks of them. Things are tough, Bill. They are, huh? There's a no good thief in town. Now, Marge, dog, don't be like your paw. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about a hound dog named Adam Kelly. He runs the wholesale business here, and all he gives is five cents a pound for tuna. Well, what do they sell it to him for? Well, of course, ain't nobody else will buy. <laughs> when they try to, Kelly and these thugs run him out of town. Somebody's got to stand up to that park. Bill? I think you're the one to do it. Who? Me? <laughs> Why should I go out after five-cent tuna when I can get 30-cent swordfish, huh? Uh, you mean why should you work hard when you can sit on that broad beam of yours and wait for a swordfish to come by? Oh, what do you got to be that way for, Marge? I'm simply protecting your investment in me. How long is it going to take before my boat's ready to go again? Jeff, Jeff says two days. Oh, you just wait and see what I'm with. And while your boat's here, you're living on the boat. No more boarding with me and Pop. Well, you just remember this. Soon's my ship's seaworthy, I'm going fishing. Why, I regard my financial obligation to you as a, well, as a debt of honor. I'd be nothing more than a mangy, old, unreputable, seagoing skunk was I to try and welsh on you and your pa... Wouldn't I? You're telling me something terrible, Bill. But I won't say it. Marge, now, doggone it. How can you think of such a thing? Hey, wake up! Wake up, you hear? 
Oh. I'll knock you flat on the halibut. Oh. Oh, hello, Marge. Oh, don't hello me, you pickled herring. No, no, wait a minute. You ought to be ashamed of yourself breaking into a gentleman's boudoir like this. I hope you had a good time last night with that blonde. Marjorie Cavendish. You don't bother to lie. Pap saw you with her down that swoon. What blonde? Oh, oh, her? That was just an old school chum of mine, that's all. An old school chum. Her name's Mamie, and she's worked that saloon for 20 years. Say, if your pappy says I was in that saloon, he's telling a big fib. He's just mad because I wouldn't buy him a beer. I heard you brought in a big swordfish yesterday afternoon. A big swordfish? I almost threw it overboard. It was so little. You sold it instead. You promised to pay me out the first haul you got. Sure I did. And I meant it, too. Hey, Pico. Yes, please. Come here, partner. Come on over here. Come here. Give Miss Kevin dish that there five dollars we've been saving special for her. Well, here's five dollars, Bill. Well, give it to her. But, Bill, I got... Give it to her. Thanks. Well, that'll be a start anyway. And let that be a lesson, Miss Margie Cavendish. Never condemn nobody until they're convicted. Yeah? And last night ought to be a lesson to you. To stay away from blondes named Mamie. Bill, my five dollars, you give it to her. You bet I did. But that five dollars, I, I got to save some money to my dear old mother. I'm glad you spoke of that, Pico. A fellow who don't take care of his parents ain't no good. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Oh, my head. Listen, Bill, you get thirty dollars for saltfish. How could you be so selfish, Pico? I got expenses and income taxes and everything to pay. Bill, that big fat blonde in the saloon, she steal your money, huh? Don't talk to me about last night. It's a horrible memory. But how am I going to save some money to my poor old mother? Stop yapping about your mall. Come on, help me get up on that deck, Pico. I got to relax in the sunshine. And then get me some coffee. Don't forget the cream. Where are I going to get the cream? I got no cow. Use your imagination. Steal it off of somebody's front doorstep. <laughs> yeah, Bill, I sure wish I had a head full of brains like you. Oh, I sure wish you had my head. Luke, Aunt Lenny, I think I found him. Hey, all right, you have to yell like that. Can't you see I'm... Here, Aunt Lenny, on this boat. Stop that screeching, lady. Say, who said you could come aboard my ship? Uh, you're the two noisiest females I ever seed. We're not strangers, Bill Johansson. This little girl happens to be your daughter. What did you say? What are you... Tra well, Letty Breckenbridge, it's you, ain't it? You always was bad luck to me. And you remember your baby, I hope? Sure I do. But this year, kid, that ain't her. Mine was only... Oh, well, she was only about that long. Children have a way of growing up. Well, Virginia, you finally had your wish. You've seen your father. Now let's get off this smelly old boat. Oh, no, I can't. I can't leave my father. It's quite obvious your father doesn't want you. Oh, of course he wants me. He gave me this boat, didn't he? Sure, I... Uh, wait a minute. You had it registered in my name. Because we got a notice, and that's how we knew we'd find you here. Yes, but I... I only did that... Nothing can prove to me that he's fit to be your father. Who ain't fit? Now, don't you go poisoning her mind like you did her ma's. There ain't nobody that's any fitter. And I'm staying with him forever. Now, look, dear, I've been over this with you a hundred times. I can't leave him. All right. Your suitcase is there on the dock, and you know where you can reach me. I'll stay at the hotel in town till my ticket runs out. When you're ready to go home, when you want anything, just telephone. Thanks, Aunt Nettie. I, I'm going to miss you. It won't be for long, darling. I'm quite sure of that. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Hey. Uh, uh, where, where's she going? Back to Gloucester. And I'm going to stay with you. You know, I've thought about you all my life. It's sure going to be good having my own paw and sitting aboard my own boat. Eh, uh, don't you go getting any ideas. You know, I'm still the skipper. Sure you are, Pa. We've always had a sea captain in our family. Like Grandpa was. Gra Gra oh, he practically drove me from the bosom of my family. Folks back home were awful proud of him. They gave him this. Look, this telescope. Oh, gee. That's some telescope, ain't it? He got it for being the best skipper in Gloucester. 
He had a schooner. The most beautiful thing you ever saw. Just like that one over there. Well, that there? Oh, that that that's the the three sisters. You know, I brought her out all the way from the East Coast myself. You did? Mm-hmm. I was going to go down to the South Seas with her when they owned this dog gone. They went and laid her up. Gosh, I wish Aunt Letty knew you did that. I was sure you were a real sea captain. Sure. Oh, say, what about that that, that t- uh, telescope? That's got gold bands around it, ain't it? Pure gold. I bet. Well, I bet we could borrow a hundred dollars on that, don't you? Say, you come with me. I want you to meet an old friend of mine. Yes, your friend, Paul. The old man sleeping by the counter. Him? <laughs> He's nobody's friend. Not even his own. Watch me wake him up. What's going on here? What in thunderation? Get out of here! Hello, pops. Where's Margie? You leave her be. You sit down here, Virginie. Margie must be out in the kitchen. I'll be right back. What is it? Guess who, honey? I don't have to. Nobody but you would come in without being asked. Gosh. Mmm. Sure smells good, whatever you're cooking, Marge. You know, honey, it must get awful lonesome around here without nobody to talk to except that cranky old man of yours. Now you leave Pap alone. Oh, you don't know what I mean. I mean... Don't you ever think what a blessing little children is? Bill, you're finally proposing. Oh, no, 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 honey. You're, you're jumping at conclusions. I, I don't mean little babies. I mean growed up, like my daughter. Oh, oh, Jenny, Jenny, come in here. So that's it. I might have known you was a bigamist. Oh, but Margie, you got me all wrong. No, no. Her ma died when she was a little bitty baby. Why, she must be... Twelve or fourteen, fifteen now. Yes, Paul. See, Marge, look, ain't she, ain't she a nice kid? Well, here's what I've been thinking. I thought that maybe you could put a little old cot there in your room where she could sleep, and, <laughs> of course, I, I'm willing to pay you a little extra for board, and then you'll have her as security for what I owe you, huh? They hold your hands. Ain't that a swell idea? What you doing? Here, take this quarter. Go get a couple more pork chops for lunch. You mean she can stay? Oh, I'll get along with you. Oh, sure. <laughs> they can straighten that all out. Oh, oh Margie, <laughs> hey, you, 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 you ain't got a got a extra slick dime, have you? What for? Well, I thought maybe I'd get a little garlico, but I can get along without it, I guess. Now here, you you be nice and polite, <laughs> Jenny, like your pa. <laughs> Hello, honey. Oh, would you really like to stay here with me? I don't know. I thought my father wanted me. He gave me his boat. That's why I came out here, but now I know he did it just so I wouldn't have to pay his bill. Who in the world ever told you that? Boy, there ain't a word of truth in it. There isn't? <laughs> I reckon I ought to know. Say, you ought to heard your pep talk about you. Mm-hmm. Prouder than a cucumber. What? Prouder. Now look, child. Your pap ain't no great shakes to look at, but that boy's got some good qualities down underneath. Oh, I know. I'm sure he has. Look, can I set the table for you? Oh, you, now you don't need to bother. Oh, but I'd like <laughs> to. I was sort of hoping I could keep house for my pa. Well, you'll be all right, honey. And you know, there's some other ways we can help him. Your pap don't know it, but what he needs in his life is a woman. Well, I'm not exactly a woman. Oh, well, now you'll do all right, and I'll help you. Do you think you'll ever be a sure enough sea captain? Well, with both of us concentrating on him, there's no telling what's going to happen. Now, let's see. Tomorrow's Sunday. How'd you like to go to church, honey? You and me and Pa? Oh, and especially your Pa. Be kind of nice for him to meet the preacher, don't you think? Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yes, sir. There's no telling what's going to happen. Like a broken heart. Needs gladness like the flowers need the dew. Our stars will return in Act Two of Barnacle Bill in just a moment. Say, Libby, what are the stars going to wear in the Easter parade? Well, starting from the ground up, I'd say anyone who owns a pair of nylons will have them on that day. 
The stars guard their nylons like gold, you know, just like the rest of us. Mm, that must mean Lux care. Oh, naturally, because Lux cuts runs way down. Imagine a movie star with a run. Uh, Claudette Colbert, for instance. You know, she's just won the Fashion Academy's award for the best-dressed woman on the screen. On the screen or off the screen, I've never seen Claudette look less than perfect. And it's all her own good taste. Remember those stunning clothes she wears in Tomorrow is Forever? She selected practically all of them herself. Directors say she not only knows what looks well on her, but knows what clothes will help the mood of the scene. That's important in a picture like Tomorrow is Forever, where there are so many tense emotional situations. Yes. And perfect clothes care is important, too. Suppose Claudette got a stocking run when she's pleading with Orson Welles who plays the part of her first husband. But international studios watch out for things like that. They specify Lux for stockings as well as all other nice washables. Lux Care really does make stockings last longer. Hundreds of scientific strain tests proved it. Stockings washed with Lux didn't go into runs nearly so quickly as those washed with strong soap or rubbed with cake soap. So no matter what kind of stockings you're planning to wear in the Easter parade, pro- prolong their life with Lux Care. You can make your Lux go further, too, if you use only as much as you need to make rich suds. Lux contains vital material, so don't waste it. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Our curtain rises on Act Two of Barnacle Bill, starring Wally Beery in the title role and Marjorie Maine as Marge Cavendish, with Noah Beery as Kelly and Carol Ann Beery as Virginia. Margie's campaign to reform Bill has borne a sudden and startling result. She's actually succeeded in getting him to church. Margie and Virginia beam happily Ringing as they the join sheep. Bill in the closing hymn. Singing in the sheep, we shall come rejoicing. Ringing in the sheep, ringing in the sheep, ringing in the sheep, we shall come rejoicing. Ringing in the sheep. It's two hours later now, and with the minister as a guest for Sunday dinner, Margie, her father, and Virginia wait hopefully for Bill. That comet, how long we got to wait for that biscuit weaver? Huh? Shush, don't shush me. Blast his britches, I could eat a shark. Uh, where do you suppose William is? Now, if that ain't a silly question, he stopped off in the saloon. Oh, dear, 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 dear. My father wouldn't go near a saloon. I should hope not, especially on the Sabbath. Uh, Bill ain't that choosy. Now, hush up, Paul. Bill took the pledge just last night, didn't he, Virginia? He promised me. He promised me he'd never... What? That's William now, isn't it? Listen. He's singing. Uh, Higher than a crow's nest, too. Oh, Comes back again. Bill, you handsome. Papa. Well, hello, Jenny. Hello, Mike. Where have you been? You've got a breath oh. strong enough to drive a pile And the minister's here. Reverend, permit me to congratulate you on your sermon this morning. I was I was just telling the boys down at the saloon, but... Oh. Papa, and after all your promises... Oh, what's everybody picking on me for? You broke your word. That's the worst thing anybody can do. Now you've got it in tears. You ornery, low-down sea cow. You come here. Marcy, you, you, you let go of my ear. I ought to pull it off, getting drunk on Sunday. Pops, call her off. Make her turn me loose. Now get your fat head under this faucet here. This here's water, something you wouldn't know anything about. Oh, stop it, Marge. Stop it. That's cold. Stop it, Marge. Honey, this is sheer madness. <laughs> Jenny, is that that you, Jenny? What you doing? Just looking out the day, Papa. Jenny, I'm I'm awfully sorry about what happened this afternoon. Gee, what you thinking about? I'm thinking about Grandpa. What about Gramps? I'm thinking I'd like to do just what he did. Cuss me out? All right, go ahead. If he gets stuck, I'll try to help you. I'm thinking about when Grandpa got sick the last time. And the doctor told him he'd never get out of bed again. That night, Grandpa got up and went out to his boat. 
But you just said he was ailing. That didn't matter, because he was a sea captain. Sea captains don't like to die in bed. That's right, we don't. Sick as he was, he went out to sea, all alone. Nobody ever saw him again. Oh, I think that's a beautiful way to die. Oh, that's a fine thing to be talking about. You're too young to... Why, what What would I do without you, Jimmy? You'd be better off. Oh, that's crazy. Whatever made you... Oh, Pa, Pa, don't you start crying now. Well, I, I'm just sorry for the way I treated you as all. And I wasn't crying either. Something just flew in my eye. Jimmy, I'm going to get myself a job. I'm going to go to work. You won't have to look for a job, Pa. Marge and me already got one for you. Oh, now, what did you have to go and do that for? Joe Patillo's boat is going out tomorrow. You don't have to take it if you don't want to. Well, I guess the trouble is I I want to. Pa! Uh, could you kiss me like that again? Oh, Jimmy? sure, Pa. Wait, wait. I, I make sure that nobody's peeking. Nobody's peeking. Guys, that's... <laughs> You'll get all smelly with fish. Hello, Marge. Uh, hello, Bill. Get a good haul. Well, you know me. Them two to come to me like sharks to a hunk of pork. You mean like bees to honey, Billy boy. <laughs> Go on in the store, Doctor. Can't keep the trade waiting. Oh, see you in a little while, Bill. You sure will. <laughs> hello, Jenny. Gee. When I get paid off, Jenny, I'm going to have as much as $200. Gee. And I'm going to buy you the prettiest dress that I can find, too. Gosh, I'd like a dress, Pa, but let's save our money, huh? Save it? What for? Oh, maybe for something like that schooner out there. Say, she's still in the harbor, ain't she? The three sisters. Gosh, having a ship like that, that's worth saving for, ain't it? Hey, Bill, we're going to get paid off now, I see. Well, I'm coming, Pico. Come on, honey, we'll go up and pick up that there first. One hundred, one hundred and fifty, one hundred and sixty-five. Hey, what is this? Yeah, we're all beefing, Bill. Well, what can we do about it? Well, I figured I had about two hundred dollars coming to me. Where's that Adam Kelly fellow? Ain't that his office there on the dock? That's no use, Bill. Kelly ain't there. Here's that fellow who works for him, Dixon. If Kelly or Dixon checked the weights for us, I'd be suspicious, but Baker did it. He's always been honest before. Well, we get paid by the weight of fish, and one thing I do know is what fish weighs. The men need the money, Pa. Can't you do something about it? Them crooks. They can't do nothing like that to us, Virginia. Not unless they cut us in on it. You're going to stick up for the fishermen, aren't you? Well, I'm going to do something. Here, you you wait here. Don't worry, men. My Pa will get your money for you. My Pa will fight Kelly's whole gang if he finds they cheated us. If you got any business with Kelly, you can tell it to me. Okay, Mr. Dixon. I figured somebody made about $3,000 extra off of that load of tuna me and those boys out there just rung in. You do, huh? Yeah, but they ain't no sense making trouble if you can settle things peaceful like. You squawking for the gang or just for yourself? Well, I'm here alone, ain't I? What do you figure you got coming, prison? Oh, about 50 bucks. Well, just so there'll be no hard feelings. Of course, uh, this year don't include anything for keeping my mouth shut. What's that worth? Well, I got a pretty big mouth, Mr. Dixon. How about 100 bucks? That would only about half shut my mouth. 150, another cent more. All right. 
Hand it over. Now, them fishermen out there, they're coming here. Put that dough in your pocket and beat it. Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Huh? That's my kid with him, see? Well, what about it? Well, that kid's my conscience. I, I, I guess I've changed my mind, Dixon. Hey, what's wrong with you? Well, I made that kid a promise, and this time I'm keeping it. Are you going to pay those fishermen fair and square? Not just me, but all of them? Uh, uh, get away, will you? Sure, I'm getting away, but you're coming with me. Now you're either paying those men off or I'm punching you, Mr. Right, square in the nose. Fine, since I stand with that gang ready to tear me apart. It's between you and me. Why, you lord hurt, I'll tear your head off. You want some more? Stay back, boys. This here fight is... Strictly private. Better stay down, your hands, and next time you won't be getting up. Hell of it, Junior, here. Watch this one. Go get yourself a tuna fish, Mr. Dixon. That's my Paul. That's my Paul. Hey, Bill, look out. Kelly's coming to McDonald's. Let him come. Hey, get off my dock. I said get off my dock. Hey, where you are, boys. Keep out of this. That's in for a fight, huh? Come on, boss. Let's get him. I... Oh, uh, uh, go on. I ain't had such a good time as this since I left them there Marines. Just don't stand there, Dixon. What did you find out? Where's your answer? Aboard that tub of his down by the shipyard. Well, that's fine. Fine. Sleeps aboard her, eh? Yeah, but if it's all the same to you, boss, I ain't picking another fight. Fine bunch of dopes we are, letting them beat our ears off. No, we're not picking any fight. I got a better idea. Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, you and McDonald are going aboard that boat, open up the sea cocks and cast her off. A nice, clean job. See? Yeah, well, what about the cops? Well, what about them? What are they going to find? The boat will be at the bottom of the harbor. Too bad, huh? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, boss, while I bust that crying. in my bunk. It must have just floated in in all this water here. Go on back to sleep, Pico. I'll just... Water? What, 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 uh, Pico, we're sinking. Bill, we are sinking, Bill. Help, I can't swim. Let's get out of here. Help, Bill, 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 it's so dark in here. Oh, quit Help. yowling and step right out on the dock there. Help! Somebody move the dock. Throw me the rope, Bill. Bill here. The rope. Grab the rope and hold on. We're all right, Pico. You're just a few feet from the dock. Margie! 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 Drop that fellow out there! Doggone, honey, we're sinking. What? Jump and pack me through the bay! Get your dinghy, Margie, and row out here. All oh, that there crazy Pico left the seacocks open. Pico, where is it? Help me! Pull him in the... Pull him in the dinghy, Margie. Stop playing the little piggy like the market and go pull him in yourself. I will, honey, just as soon as I get this mouse trap off my pinky. Uh, there. Well, honey, looks like I'll have to be boarding with you after all. The you won't be living on that boat after they get a raise. Well, I guess it's just fate, Margie, bringing us closer and closer together. Who am I to struggle against the stars? You know, Billy boy, I might let you hold my hand. If it wasn't a Rowan. Oh, Margie Cavendish. Hey, there's a poor boat, Bill. Good thing she sink in the shallow water. Easy to find it with the mass above the water, huh? Yeah, you're going to hire yourself a diving suit and go down and look her over. Why do I have to go downstairs in the water? Because you was the one that left the seacocks open, that's why. How many times I'm going to tell you I didn't do it? You did so. Would I do a crazy thing like that? No. Now, you go and ask Mama? my... Mama? Here I am, Jenny. Paul, they're having an auction sale. They're going to sell the three sisters. They're what? An auction man's there and they're trying to sell it. Oh, well, they can't do that. What do we do if somebody takes her away? Don't even think of such things. Come on, I'm getting over there and see what's going on. Come on. Come on there. Funny 
2500 I've got. $2,500. That's terrible. That there boat costs at least $50,000. That's right, mister, but people aren't buying ships like the three sisters these days. All right, I got 2500 once, 2500 twice, the third and the last time. 26 You crazy? $2,600 once, twice, the third and the last time. Sold to that gentleman with the little girl. Step up, brother, and pay your deposit. Who? Me? Well, naturally. Uh, but, mister, I just happened to be passing by. I don't carry that much money with... I couldn't take less than $150 to bind a $2,600 deal. Well, $150, that's different. What's your name? Oh, Bill. Bill what? William. Captain William Johansson. And our address is care of the Cavendish Dry Dock. Thank you, young lady. Well, Captain, the balance is due in ten days. Here's the address to send it to. The boat's all yours now. Did you hear that? The three sisters is ours. Gosh, look at her. Ain't she beautiful? Bill, where are we going to get $2,450? Paul, get it, won't you, Paul? Well, there's only one person I know got that much money. It's going to be a terrible sacrifice, but I guess the time has come to make it. <laughs> Down, Bill. Sure was thoughtful of you to bring me these flowers. Come to does things to me. Oh, they ain't half as delicate as you are, Margie. Say, Margie, uh, Jimmy's asleep? Oh, huh? sure. And your pop's out? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Just you and me, Bill. Sitting in the parlor like we used to. Yeah, yeah, guys. Mars, would you sing that there song again? Just, just for old times' sake. Why, sure, Bill. Kind of like it myself. You know, it's, it's so soothing the way you sing it. Come on, honey. Like a broken heart needs gladness. Like the flowers need the dew. Like a baby needs its mother. That's, That's how I need you. Oh, gee, you, you got me, you got me all choked up, Margie. I never seen such amazing talents all wrapped up in one little woman. Oh, oh now, I ain't so really talented. <laughs> you, you, you know, Margie, when I get my boat, I'm going to get an organ just like this here. And then if I'm lucky enough, I'm going to marry a woman like you. And I'll have her sing that song to me every night before I go to sleep. Sounds mighty attractive, Bill. Yeah, but I guess there ain't much sense in talking. How am I going to get get that there kind of a boat? Why, I thought you was buying the three sisters. Yes, I am, but, you know, it's it's the hardest thing in the world doing business with them there big bankers. That their rate of interest is scandalous. Why, I'd be just working for a heartless corporation, not for the woman I love. Bill, I ain't going to let you do it. You ain't going to let me do what, Marge? Work for no heartless corporation. Oh, no, no, honey. I guess I'm... I'm doomed. Oh, no, you ain't. Because, uh... If it wouldn't embarrass you none, I'd like to loan you that money myself. Marge! I got the money for you this afternoon. Well, I... I, I, I can't... I can't believe that. I... I couldn't believe it unless I felt it in my hand. Well, here it is, Bill. It's for you. Gosh. Oh, gee, ain't, ain't that a lovely shade of green? Marge, honey. Yeah, Bill? Marge, honey. Uh, pucker up them lips of yours. They're all a puckered up, Billy. Yeah. Yeah, Margie. Hmm? Uh, let, let's whistle that there song, honey. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
our stars will return with Act Three in a moment. Every year, new starlets rise in Hollywood. Some fade, but others shine more brightly every year. Our studio scout, Libby Collins, has brought one of Metro Golden Mayor's most promising young players here tonight as our guest. She's Dorothy Patrick, blonde and blue eyed, with talent to match. How did you get started in the movies, Dorothy? A talent scout saw me in a little theater play in Hollywood, Mr. Keeley. The next day, I was signing a contract. Without a screen test? Mm-hmm. Mm, quite a compliment. I soon made one. MGM was casting for the Green Years, and I'd read A.J. Cronin's book and thought it would make a magnificent picture. What part would you test it for, Dorothy? The role that Beverly Tyler finally got. But all of us are happy that she got it. She's perfect as Tom Drake's sweetheart. That's very generous of you. And I understand that MGM has plans for you. Yes. They're casting me in the new Jerome Kern picture. But I hope sometime I can work with Charles Coburn. He's really superb in the green years as Grandfather Gal. Tell me, Dorothy, now that you're on the road to success, what are you going to buy that you've always wanted? Confidentially. Heaps and heaps of lingerie. I love pretty slips and nighties. Sugary pinks and blues and yellows. But you can be sure I'll take good care of them with luck. If that interests Mr. Kennedy. Indeed it does, Dorothy. You know, even girls on a budget can have more pretty lingerie if they give under things gentle lux care. Isn't that right, Libby? Perhaps you'd better explain that, Mr. Kennedy. Well, scientific washing tests showed that undies washed with a strong soap, hot water, and rough handling soon looked faded and drab. Those washed the lux way stayed color fresh and lovely three times as long. So instead of spending money just to replace faded undies, you can buy new ones. That is, you spend no more than you would otherwise. Right. So you can feel as glamorous as you please without being extravagant. Lux keeps undies lovely so much longer. It's worth waiting for. Thank you for coming tonight, Dorothy. And a suggestion to our radio audience. If you can't get Lux the first time you try, try again. More is on the way. We return you now to Mr. William Keeley. After our final curtain, you're invited backstage for a brief chat with tonight's star. Here's the final act of Barnacle Bill, starring Wallace Beery as the gentleman in question, Marjorie Main as Marge, with Noah Beery as Kelly, and Carol Ann Beery as Virginia. It's the following morning, and stretched out on the dock of his newly acquired schooner, Bill Johansson watches as Pico paints the foremast. But in his heart is a cold terror, for he's led Marge to believe that he'll marry her. Bill is a most unhappy character. Hey, Bill, why don't you never help me to work? Hmm? Because I'm thinking, Pico, you and me are getting out of here. We're going to the South Sea Islands. What kind of talk these old South Seas? You know I always had my heart set on the South Seas. Sure, Bill, but I thought... Well, that's where we're going. Hey, Bill, what is Marge going to say to you? All I'm worried about is getting provisions and stuff to trade to them their natives down there. Oh, you mean like bees and calicos? Yeah, lollipops, umbrellas. It would take just about $300. Yeah, but where we... Oh, oh Bill, look. We got company. It's Ginny and Joe Patillo. Keep your mouth shut. Get back to that paint can. Uh, hello, Ginny. Come on aboard, Joe. Getting her all fixed up, huh, Bill? Yeah, I've been working like a dog. Has a wonderful idea. He wants to tell you about it. Phil, me and the boys was thinking how you could turn the schooner into a refrigerator boat mighty easy. Refrigerator boat? You mean going out to them tuna boats, buying up fish? Sure. Kelly made a fortune doing it, and so can you. You treat us square, Bill. We'll buy the ice and operate on shares. Say, that's a swell idea. You, you mean you'll do it? Oh, sure, yeah. I'll do it. Sure. Didn't I tell you? Well, I'll go make arrangements for the ice right away. Gee, Paul, wait till I tell Marge. Gosh! She'll be as proud of you as I am. Well, Bill, I think now we're never going to get to the South Sea. We're shoving off just like I said. But how are we going to get the calicos in the umbrellas? How? From Adam Kelly. He's going to buy them for us. Bill, you crazy again? When Kelly finds out that we're in the fish business, he'll borrow us $300 just to get rid of the competition. <laughs> you please, my fellow, all right. Uh, but this Miss Jenny going to get one big disappointment. No, no, she won't feel bad. Why, I... I might even take her with us to the South Seas. Go on, finish up that mast. I'm going to town and, and do some high finance. Hey, Bill, all 
these boxes full of calico. See, we sure going to do plenty of business with those South Seas. Sure we are. Now hurry up and get get them down below. Uh, what about Ginny? You, you told her yet? Of course not. I just looked in on her cabin. She's sound asleep. Uh, she sure like to live on this schooner, Bill. Oh, quit stalling. Quit stalling. We'll be getting tired in about three hours. Uh, Bill, what Ginny going to say when she find out we're going to the South Seas? She ain't going to find out. We'll just tell her we're going on a shakedown cruise and later... <laughs> Oh, 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 hello, Ginny. Uh, hey, well, well, what are you doing up at this hour of the night? I thought you and Pico went to bed Well, we were just taking on some supplies, that's all. You're not fooling me, Paul. Oh, uh, I ain't, uh... They've been counting on you. Mr. Patil and all the fishermen. They were going to make you captain of the whole fishing fleet. Oh, who wants to be a captain of the fishing fleet? We're going to the South Sea, Ginny. Instead of smelling fish, we're going to smell them that coconuts. Pa, oh, please. you just got to help the fishermen. This is the only chance I've got, and I, I'm gone. We're leaving tonight. All right, then, Pa. Go ahead, but I'm not going with you. Ginny. Ginny. Where are you going, Ginny? <laughs> somebody, you want to be proud of him. And when you can't, it just hurts. That's all. But don't you worry. I'm having a little talk with Bill Johannesson right now. So, run away, huh? Oh, doggone it, Marge. What, what, what do you want to scare me like that for? Bill, you've been nothing but a disappointment to me ever since I laid eyes on you. I can forgive you for that, but I can't forgive you for breaking the heart of your own little girl. Now, what have I done? You wouldn't understand if I was to tell you. I've come to get her clothes. She's going back home with her Aunt Letty. Going back home? Why, she can't do that. I, I'll go up and talk to her. No, you ain't. You ain't going to get around her with that oily tongue of yours like you did me. You mean she she wants to go home? She don't want to stay with her own pop? No, there ain't no ways, two ways of talking about it, Bill. You just ain't no fit ter- person to bring up a child. Well, uh, I'll go get her clothes, Marge. You tell her I said so long. And if she has time to, to send me one of them there picture postal cards, will you, Mag? I'll tell her. Hey, Bill, I got all the boxes below. Come on, Bill, the tide is starting to change. Bill, what's the matter with you? Shut up. Bill, you sick maybe, huh? All you do for two hours now is look on top of the water. You, you see something maybe? I see my future career going out on the tide and there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, well, you forget that when we get to South Seas. <laughs> we ain't going to the South Seas. Bill! We're staying right here. Stop asking me questions. This ornery conscience of mine. First time in my whole life I ever had trouble out wrestling my inner self. Uh, Bill, what, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to help those fishermen like, like Ginny, she said? No woman's going to tell me what to do. Here. Here, take this, your telescope, and go up and give it back to Ginny before she goes away. And get back here. We're loading up with ice the first thing in the morning. Three more ton, Joe. Yeah, about three more ton, Joe. Hey, hey there, you. Where do you think you're going, Pap? I'm coming 
aboard this vessel. Now, Dad, come it, you got a real sailor and skipper aboard. Hey, you just pick up that duffel bag and get back where you belong. We're shoving off here any second now. I'm staying right where I am. I'm here to protect my little girl's interest in this ship. Does Marge know you're down here? That ain't none of your business. That's all the ice we got, Mel. Okay, Joe. Hey, stop that. Don't go give him any orders on my boat. Okay, Joe. Get on them sails, Pico. We're on our way. Stand by the cast door. Now cut that out. Gee, Pico, did you ever see a sweeter sailing ship in all your life? <laughs> we, we sure go fast, Bill. Fast? fast. Shucks. If Bill knew anything about sailing, he'd crack out them topsails. Pico, you know something? I think I've changed my mind after all. I'm starting to smell them there coconut palms again. You, you think so? Ain't no reason why on earth why we can't keep right on sailing down to the South Seas. Uh, what's that? Yeah, but what are we going to do about Pops here? Oh, just chuck him overboard for the shark. You better stop talking like that. Well, the sharks wouldn't eat him anyway. He's too tough. Can you sail a dory, Pop? Can I sail I can sail one from here to China. Well, you're going to sail one from here to San Pedro right now. Don't you try it, Bill Johansson. I'll have the law on you. Get that dory ready, Pico. Doctor! No Doctor! use hollering for Marge, Pop. She can't hear you. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, well, Margie. Why, honey, what are you doing on board this ship? Say, you just stop trying to scare my Pop. Oh, shucks. I was only fooling. Say, don't you know it's felonious to stow away on somebody's boat? And don't you know I wouldn't let you do any hard work on an empty stomach? You come aboard to be our cook? Got a stew on the stove right now. Sure you ain't suspicious of me or nothing like that? Oh, of course you're all right, Bill. I just ain't taking no chances. Well, that's different. Say, uh, Jenny ain't hiding down below, too, is she? No, Bill. Jenny's gone off with her aunt. Oh, well, I, I will. I was just hoping Hey, that... Bill, look. Ain't that Kelly's sheep out there? Huh? Yeah. That's Kelly's refrigerator boat, all right. He... He's signaling to us. He's turning, Bill, to come up alongside. Well, let him come. We might as well get this over with now as any time. Hey, what's the idea, you handsome? Flying that tuna flag. On a con, I'm in the fish business, Kelly. You dirty double-crosser. I gave you 300 bucks to keep your big nose out of my racket. Ah, oh, don't worry about your money. You'll get it back with interest as soon as we're in port again. You haul any fish for Patillo and that guys, you'll never get back to port. Well, you just follow me and see what happens. We're heading for them fishing banks right now. You asleep yet? Uh, sure, I'm asleep. I'm worn out. Huh. Mm. First honest day's work you ever done. Yeah. Now it's your fill up with tuna, Bill. Mm. Folks sure got us closed in, Bill. Good thing we dropped anchor. Maybe she'll live by more. Mm. What's that noise? I hear something. Mm. Now call yourself a sailor, snoring away in the anchor dragon. Good thing I'm aboard if we'd all get down. There was such a helpless critter in all... boss, it's the old man. Who are you? What in tarnation are you doing on this boat? I said, Bill, Bill, help! Shut him up, will you? Ah, he won't holler none now. Come on, Dixon. We got to get off of here. Bill, Bill! Somebody's on deck! I'm coming, Margie. Pico! Hey, wake up! Is that you, Pop? Why don't you... Come on, Dixon. Get in here. Well, you never stop trying, do you, Kelly? Why, you two-bit chisel Bill! <laughs> we're trying to... We open the creek up! Open the... So you... You're the one that tried to drive me before, huh? Hey, Dixon. <clears throat> get that belay in there. Here, you need that to help No. No. This here's a private fight, Pico. Can you get the belay in him, Bill? Okay, Marge. Maybe you better give me a hand here. Sure thing, Bill. Get out of my way. Just uh, a second, brother. I got him, Bill. He runs straight into the scoop net here. Just set on him, Margie. And you better duck. Here comes Kelly. They're coming too, Bill. 
Bill. What are they going to do with them now? You can get up now, honey. Turn them loose. Turn them loose? Yeah. I ought to crack their skulls, but I I got work for them to do. I got to get back home, Bill. I'm worried about Pat. He ain't feeling so good down there. Hit that little old man. Why, I ought to... Bill, look, the fox is blowing away. I I don't like this wind, Bill. It's going to blow like the table, I think. Well, the harder the better, the sooner we'll get home. You ain't sailing this tub home. You keep out of this here conversation. You can't start your engines with that water in the hole. We don't need no engine. Get on your feet, both of you. Well, what are you going to do with us? Make sailors out of you. Or angels. You two go forward and get on that anchor. And jump uh, on the captain's face. Okay. And when that anchor's up, you two low-down skunks is going to man the pumps from here home. Marge here's going to be standing over you with this here belaying pin. Now get going. This is the United States Coast Guard. Repeat on storm warning. Gale, hurricane force moving north from coast of Lower California. Velocity 70 miles. Wind increasing. All ships south of Point Vincente seek shelter immediately. There will be a supplementary report in 10 minutes. Stand by. Well, how did you get in here, young lady? Please, it said the Coast Guard could tell me. Have you had any words from the Three Sisters? She's my father's schooner. The Three Sisters? She left the fishing banks this morning for San Pedro. Then they're right in the middle of the storm. Oh, isn't there anything you can do? Not now, but they'll make it all right. She's a fine ship. I know she is, And but... the rest is up to the skipper. Then I guess I'm not worried. My pa's the skipper, and he's just about the best sea captain there is. He'll bring her in, all right? He's got to. Three sisters coming into port. She's safe. The three sisters are safe. Get down to the docks, everybody. Bill's bringing her in. He's bringing her in. And now, and now the doc says that Pop's going to be all right. The Coast Guard is detaining Mr. Kelly and Mr. Dixon. All I got to say is, all I got to say is, for Ginny. Oh, oh, Pa, am I glad to Ginny, Ginny, gee, gosh. I thought you were way across the country in Gloucester. When it came time to leave, I just couldn't go, Pa. Gee, gosh. Anyway, Margie told me you weren't really going to South Seas after all. You know what else she said? She said you're the best sea captain in the whole world. Did she say that? And here, Pa, here's Grandpa's telescope. I know he'd want you to have it, because... I know he'd be just as proud of you as I am. Oh, Jimmy, thanks. Margie! Hey, Margie! Oh, she's busy now, Pa. She's talking to somebody. Who? Don't get mad, Pa. The minister. Jenny, honey, how'd, how'd you like to be one of my bridesmaids? <laughs> and have pledged their faith each to the other and have declared same by joining their right hands, I now pronounce that you are husband and wife. You may claim the bride, William. Well, ain't I got her? Pa, he means you can kiss her. K- kiss her? Certainly. Now go ahead. Oh, nah. well, I'm, I'm game if you are, Margie. I'm a-waiting, Billy boy. <laughs> stars will return in a moment for their curtain call. Do you have a big family dinner on Sundays? It's good to see the folks, isn't it? But don't you sometimes wish you could serve dinner on paper plates? All morning you're in the kitchen, making a pie, stuffing a chicken. Afterwards, there's a mountain of dishes to wash. What with Grandma and Grandpa, Sister Lil and Fred and their young Betty, Junior, your husband, and yourself. If your menu includes fruit sherbet, roast chicken, dessert, and coffee you'll have at least 73 pieces of silver and dishes to wash. Quite a stack. But do you know that less than two tablespoons of Lux Flakes will do all those dishes? Pretty thrifty, isn't it? At that rate, you could wash the dishes for over 20 big Sunday dinners with just one big box of Lux Flakes. 
And lots more dinners than that when your family's down to normal size. A big box of Lux does all those dishes because it goes further. Tests prove that an ounce of Lux Flakes actually washes up to twice as many dishes as an ounce of any of ten other leading soaps. And no matter how many dishes you have to wash, Lux will help your hands stay soft and smooth and lovely. Even if strong soaps have left your hands red and rough, just changing to gentle Lux for dishes will make them lovely again. Why not change to Lux for your dishes? Here's your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Our thanks for a four-star performance go to that able firm of Beery, 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 and Maine, who come to the footlights for a curtain call. Well, the Beery sure had me outnumbered tonight. They're a talented bunch, all right. And we're especially happy to welcome young Carol Ann to this stage. I'm sure she's headed for a great career. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. But you know, Dad should take an extra bow. That's right. Today's his birthday. April 1st, eh? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Bill, but I... Hope we're going to skip any jokes about April Fool. <laughs> well, if you say so, Wally, but it's too bad you couldn't have had it taken a day off for your birthday. A day off? Every time I have a birthday, I take a year off. Marjorie, you surely can't be worried about your age. Not since the 96th Infantry Division voted you their occupation girl. Well, they got stamina, those boys. <laughs> What's the difference, Miss Maine, between a pinup girl and an occupation girl? Are you kidding, honey? You've got eyes, haven't you? <laughs> well, Marjorie, I'm sure the 96th Division wouldn't have chosen you unless you'd been an inspiration to them. Well, they hurried back anyway. Wally, how come the Wax or Waves didn't elect you a pinup boy? Shucks, Bill. <laughs> of course, it embarrasses me to tell about it, but they tossed a coin between me and Van Johnson two out of three. <laughs> two out of three, eh? Huh? Well, <laughs> then it was three out of five. Four out of seven, five out of nine, and so on until Van Johnson won. <laughs> well, I'd have you on my wall, Wally, except I don't think you'd go so well with heliotrope design. I think Dad looks much better against the background of our Jackson Hole ranch. Wonderful country up there in Jackson Hole, Wally. Yeah, Bill. When the theater goes see Bad Bascom, which Marjorie and I just finished with Margaret O'Brien from Metro Golden Mayor... They'll appreciate how beautiful that country is up there. I understand that picture's having its premiere in Wyoming this week. What are you presenting here on Lux next week, Bill? Next Monday night, we're bringing our audience another colorful, exciting drama. metro golden Mayor's western thriller, Hunky Tonk. And our stars are Lana Turner and John Hodiak. I can see the audience approves the cast, Bill. Well, I could kind of go for that Hodiak fellow myself. <laughs> and Honky Tonk is a story made to order for them. The fast-moving saga of a gentleman gambler, quick on the trigger, reckless both at love and dice, and a woman whose loyalty and deep devotion follow him to the dramatic climax of his dangerous career. Sure sounds like an exciting evening, Bill. Good night. Good night, Good night. and many happy returns. 